You're watching special coverage of the coronavirus response presented by Eyewitness News. Welcome back to the special edition of Eyewitness News as we answer your questions concerning coronavirus. The COVID-19 pandemic is not only creating some health and safety concerns, but also fraud and crime concerns. Federal, state and local law enforcement are warning residents now to be on alert for those individuals who are trying to profit from this pandemic. The yeah, I-Team's Andy Mahalschik joins us live from Wilkesbury tonight with details. Andy. And Nick and Candace, I'm told it's a growing problem and expected to get worse. Now, I spoke to law enforcement officials at every level of government, federal, state, and county. They all had the same message. While most of us are out there trying to protect ourselves and our family from COVID-19, there are other people out there trying to steal our money. And the COVID-19 pandemic has many people thinking about the health and safety of themselves and their families. And would-be thieves know that. So says David Freed the United States Attorney for the Middle District of Pennsylvania. It's the same sort of scam using COVID-19 as a basis. Freed says these con artists realize that many people may be preoccupied with COVID-19 and they may be more easily fall victim to a scam. Folks that are using uh, uh, robocalls to make fraudulent offers to sell respirators and masks, you know, fake apps that if you, if you give them certain information will install malware on your computer, phishing emails, asking for money. They're taking advantage of the vulnerability. People are scared and they're falling for this. Luzerne County District Attorney Stephanie Salvantis talks about a scam that is particularly disturbing. Then you have people who are calling saying that they're hospital personnel and that um, they may be, uh, uh, they may test positive for coronavirus because someone they know has uh, gotten it. So if you want to get a test, please provide your credit card information. Both prosecutors offer up this advice. You know, I put out something this morning just reminding people to not share financial or personal information unless it's with someone or a business that you trust. And law enforcement officials say these con artists, these scammers, play basically a numbers game. They know they reach out to as many people as possible, and eventually the odds are somebody, maybe a small group, will fall prey to their scam. Reporting live at the Luzerne County Courthouse, Andy Mahal, Chicago Witness News. It's amazing. People can be so just cruel at a time like this. Andy, thank you. And we have some more information on how you can report scams on pahomepage.com. All right, joining us again in our studio is Dr. Gerald Maloney, Chief Medical Officer, Geisinger Hospitals, and Dr. Matthew Berger, who is a local psychiatrist. And joining us remotely tonight, Dr. Jeffrey Jerry, who is an infectious disease specialist and Senior Vice President, Medical and Academic Affairs for St. Luke's Health Network. Well, we've got a couple of questions from our Facebook page here, and this one, first one comes from Corinne from our Facebook. She said, do you think that chloroquine will be a good medicine to treat the virus and if not what medicines are doctors trying to help out those who are very ill let's um, throw this one out to dr jerry uh thank you uh first of all all of these medications that have been touted are in trial phases and a lot of what you hear is more anecdotal uh, unfortunately there's been a run by the public on chloroquine through pharmacies and what one has to understand that this is not a benign drug and several people in the United States have already died of overdoses. So at this point in time, again, rather than trying to self-treat yourself or obtain medications to do so, make sure that you're in contact with your physician. Some of these drugs will not turn out to be helpful. And as I've already said, in some cases, they've already been shown to be harmful if they're taken in the wrong way. Dr. Jerry, a quick follow up on that point. Is it possible that the solution, the vaccine, whatever it could be, might be a, co a concoction, a combination of several drugs? Is that a possibility? If you're speaking about a vaccine, it's not a question of drugs. Uh, it's a question of something that would bolster your immunity. And there is a lot of fast track effort in terms of vaccine development. I think there is at least 25 different areas that I'm aware of right now that are international to try and develop a vaccine for this. I think what's well to keep in mind though, no matter how fast track these are, nobody is going to predict that these vaccines will be widely available for the current outbreak. It may be a year from now because they have to undergo some extensive testing to make sure that they're both safe and effective. 
And Dr. Maloney, this one for you, another question from our viewers on Facebook. I've heard that when you get the COVID-19 virus, you're supposed to stay at home in a separate room in your house, but doesn't that just set up for everyone else living in that house to also get the virus? Well, the point is that you need to remain distant as, as you can from people. So everybody really should assume that they're positive when they get sick rather than worrying about being tested to prove it. But if you're able, if, if you think about it, the social distancing actually has some science behind it because the particles are spread via droplets that come out when we breathe and those normally travel about six feet so if you can stay further than six feet away from people if you can limit the time you're in close contact with people to just a few seconds to a few minutes that's fairly effective in preventing the spread okay again we have another question from our Facebook page will the highly anticipated warmer weather maybe spring or summer allow COVID-19 to diminish Dr. Maloney so I don't think so I okay. think that you know we think that it's going to follow the same pattern as influenza does but I don't think that we can make that determination most of the time we think that in influenza season part of the reason is because we're staying inside and not and that's how we're getting it and once we can open the windows and get outside it really hasn't been that bad we've been outside a lot and the, the virus is still growing and it's growing in places where it's a warmer climate to begin with. So I think that the, the normal life cycle of this virus is just going to be a little different. Right, Dr. Berger, let's include you in this discussion now. We've sort of talked about this a little bit, um, socializing. People aren't being social. They're not going to work. Um, what can you talk about in terms of the impact that is going to have on their mental health? Yeah, well, I mean, <clears throat> isolation is very hard on people. I mean, one of the things we do when we want to punish somebody is we put them in isolation, right? You're, if you're in jail, you get isolated. So isolation is very hard. Uh, I think it's, we all have to come to terms with the fact that, again, isolation doesn't have to be isolation using our current technology. Um, and I think, again, goes back to the idea of being as normal as you can possibly be. If you work out every day, find a way to work out at home. I mean, obviously the whole Peloton thing, you know, where they do the, the, the uh, and, and most gyms locally are offering workouts that you can do online. Uh, you know, socialization, you mentioned the virtual happy hour, um, you know, those kind of things that you can do to interact and socialize. Also, this is a great time, honestly, to do one of those things you've never wanted to do. Learn to play the banjo, read the great American novel, <laughs> you know, clean out that closet that you wanted to clean out. Don't sit on the couch and catastrophize. Don't mm -hmm. sit on the thing and wonder, when am I going to get this next? Who's the next person to fall? You want to make sure that you, again, keep your mind occupied, mm -hmm. not focused on the illness because you can make it a lot bigger than it really is. And again, I'm not trying to minimize the impact, sure. but you don't want to make it the be all and end all. And you know, the other thing is this country has a tremendous amount of redundancy. We're seeing people like runs on milk and toilet paper and stuff like that. This is not going to shut down all of American supplies. Uh, that, that we talked about the herd mentality. Well, somebody sees someone buying eight rolls of toilet paper, they think, oh, I should buy eight rolls of toilet paper. This is classic too. panic yeah. buying. Exactly. Yeah. It's panic buying and it's, it's creating a fear that builds on itself. Sure. You know, the, you know in, in London during the Blitz, right? Mm -hmm. Churchill was out there walking the streets and saying, let's be calm and keep our lives normal. This isn't the Blitz. Yeah. Okay. All right, doctors, thank you. We've got more questions, too, that we'll uh, ask you in the later parts of the show here. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic is causing a significant decrease in phone calls at the Women's Resource Center in Lackawanna and Susquehanna counties. And survivors or victims could be at home with their abuser. Eyewitness News reporter Cody Butler talks with experts. In a time many are working from home or asked to stay home due to the spread of the coronavirus, it's unknown how many people are being quarantined with an abuser. The main motive of any batter abuser is power and control. And that means that they are constantly uh, monitor monitoring where the person is, what they're doing. Amy Everett says 8,000 calls come into the Women's Resource Center from Lackawanna and Susquehanna counties each year. That's an average of 153 calls a week. During the COVID-19 pandemic, it's down to around a dozen a week. That to me was a sign that there may be people out there who are in um, some really dangerous situations. Survivors of domestic and sexual violence just are, you know, stuck at home like all of us and they're not able to call. Peg Ruddy says in her 30 plus years at the center, this is a first and is worried. The pandemic could be causing a stressful time for the normal person. Victims or survivors could be experiencing a much higher stress level with no way out. We all think about home as being safety and that is just a myth. 
in many of our communities. If you are being abused or just need someone to talk to, call the hotline number at 1-800-257-5765. Both women have a message for survivors watching. We will bring you help. We will get you out of there. You can call and rely on us 24-7. We will do whatever we can to keep to keep you safe. We are here when there is an opportunity. In Scranton, Cody Butler, Eyewitness News. The Women's Resource Center says opportunities could be like going to a different room or maybe going to the grocery store to call the hotline. If you're looking on the center's website and you feel an abuser may be threatening you immediately, you can quickly push the emergency escape button in the bottom right hand corner that will automatically redirect you to a different page within seconds. And we have a link to their website on our website. Of course, it's pahomepage.com. Well, the virus forced the closing of schools all across the Commonwealth, so home is now the base for learning. Parents are getting a crash course in reading, writing, and arithmetic. And there are many online aids helping with at-home learning. And now Eyewitness News is joining in. Meteorologist Stefano DiPietro is sharing his love of science and weather with an online version of his Stefano at School. And here's a preview. As we get ready to flip the calendar from winter to spring, we'll be entering the heart of severe weather season here in northeastern and central Pennsylvania. And something we've become all too familiar with over the last couple of seasons are tornadoes. We've seen the damage they can create, but exactly how is a tornado itself formed? Well, it all starts with the wind direction. In a severe weather event, we're looking for wind direction changing with height. That being down here at the surface, wind blows one direction. Higher up in the atmosphere, wind starts to blow in the opposite direction. When we have that wind direction changing with height, right in between, we start to get some horizontal rotation. And what this is, is actually the early stages of what will eventually be the birth of a tornado. Think of thunderstorms as big vacuums. They suck in a lot of air. It's that updraft that lifts that rotation vertically. And when we do that and that rotation gets faster and faster, what we get is the birth of a tornado. That's pretty cool. Now you can see the online version of Stefano at School on PAHomepage.com. And then once school is back in session, Stefano will be visiting classrooms again with his presentation. There is much more to come on this special edition of Eyewitness News. We'll answer more of your questions. Plus, we'll take a look at the impact of the virus on the primary election. And a big reminder, Pennsylvania American Water is advising customers not to flush those sanitizing wipes, even if the label says they're flushable. That can lead to sewer backups and in-home plumbing issues, which may be very expensive to repair. We'll be right back.